All right, it is cold outside, but we've got the perfect book to warm your soul. Hello and welcome back. Thank you so much. We have another Wandering Jellyfish recommendation. This time it's Yonder by Ali Standish. And the kind of exciting thing about this book is that it's an advanced reader copy. So the official publication date is sometime in May 2022. So you're getting a little bit of a sneak peek. Now, this is a historical fiction book taking place in the early 1940s during World War II in Appalachia. It's unclear where exactly in Appalachia, at least I might have missed that, but um, it is really good, you guys. It is a middle grade read, but don't let that deter you because there are so many different topics that are discussed in this book that I really think that fans of YA, fans of adult can really find something that they enjoy. So the book primarily follows Danny Timmons and he is 12 going on 13 and he lives in this really small town and he has so much character growth and I think that's perhaps what I like best about this book. And not only is it just character growth, but he even experiences a paradigm shift and while I don't read a lot of middle grade fiction, and it's been a while since I have read a lot of middle grade fiction, I feel that this paradigm shift is kind of unique because while I wouldn't consider Danny himself to be small minded, because he lives in such a small town, he just doesn't have a whole lot of life experience. He doesn't have a whole lot of exposure to different ideas, different perspectives, etc. And so his mom really tries to open his eyes to really see the world around him and so does his friend and hero Jack and to perhaps a lesser degree his friend Lou. It takes time for Danny to have that shift but when he does it's so beautifully well done. And that's something else that I think is really interesting about this book. So like I said it's historical fiction, it's dealing with the war. One thing that is interesting is that I feel like a lot of World War II books focus on the experience in Europe and we don't hear a lot of stories coming from the home front. So this that's one thing that makes this book unique. The other things that make it unique is that this book talks about child abuse, it talks about friendship, it talks about prejudice, it as I said talks about the war effort. Standish just really took on a really big task in writing this book. But I don't think she bit off more than she could chew because it was so engaging and it flowed really, really well. And I flew through the book. It was so, so well done. So the different topics. Danny, as I said, is a 12 going on 13 year old boy. And he really looks up to Jack. And Jack is a few years ahead of him and he doesn't seem like he's afraid of anything. But Jack has a hard life. His mother has died, so it's only him and his father. And his father suffers from PTSD. It's unclear if he has some other sort of issues going on, like he might be an alcoholic, but that's a little unclear. But what is clear, unfortunately, is that he does beat Jack sometimes. And so that's one example of where Danny has the beginnings of this paradigm shift because he sees that not all parents are as loving and caring as his own are. Um, and he starts to see those little injustices. Another example, oh, hi Lily. <laughs> Another example of Danny beginning to see some of these injustices in the world are is with the Musgrave family. Now, I didn't realize that the Musgrave family was a black family at first, um, but that becomes steadily more clear as the story goes on. Because initially, we just hear about the Musgraves and how they were run out of town. And I thought on multiple occasions, but why? Who are they? We haven't met them yet. Why do people keep talking about them? Well, it turns out they were the only black family in this town and this really selfish man kind of like a Mr. Potter character from It's a Wonderful Life, essentially runs them out because he wants their farm. And so again, Danny's mom is really instrumental in showing him that sometimes people treat other people poorly for 
really terrible reasons like the color of one's skin and racism. And so Danny starts to see, there's this really beautiful moment where he's amused by the fact that the Musgrave son Jordan likes to read the newspaper because Jordan's a few years younger than Danny and despite Danny's parents running the newspaper or, or editing the newspaper, he's not as interested. He's like, ha ha, it's so funny. And his mom says, Danny, that's nothing to laugh at. He reads the paper because he has nothing else that he can read. He can't go to the library. And that just blows Danny's mind and opens his eyes to more injustice. And kind of similarly, um, this Pittman slash Potter character, the uh, prejudiced guy in the town, he makes the whole town essentially turn on Danny's best friend Lou's family because Lou's brother is a war deserter. And so again, Danny sees this paradigm, has this paradigm shift where he sees these injustices and he wants to do better. He wants to be better and he wants to set a better example. And I loved that character development. It's a super engaging book, as I said. Uh, stylistically, it's kind of interesting because it shifts between present, which is June 1943, right after Jack disappears, and, and then it shifts to the before time. So anywhere kind of from mid to late 1940 up until a couple days before the present. And so the present only takes place over a relatively short period of time because Danny, or I'm sorry, Jack has only been missing for a couple of days. So there is a little bit of a mystery element for mystery fans out there. But yeah, it's just, it's really well done. I think it's really well paced. There's tons of detail. The characters are certainly well developed. I know I've talked a lot about Danny, but even some of the other characters, like Jack is just such an interesting character to read because at first you just kind of see him as this hero who stands up for the little guy but as Danny uncovers more in the search for Jack he realizes that Jack does have fears and that not everything is what it seems and it's just such a beautiful story that I really think you're going to like it. And like I said, I, it does appeal to a number of different readers because of the different elements throughout. And so, again, don't let the middle grade label deter you because I think just as um, Ty Keller on the front says, both timely and historical, a beautiful and wholehearted exploration of what it means to be brave and do good. I think that just sums up the book really well. It is timely and historical and just so engaging. So good. So that's all I have for Yonder. Again, it's gonna be coming out May, 2022. So thank you to The Wandering Jellyfish for recommending it. Next week, I'm partnering with another local bookstore. I'm partnering with Inkberry Books to bring you Food Festival and Religion, Materiality and Place in Italy by Francesca Sansimino Howell. This, review originally appeared in the Left Hand Valley Courier. There was also an author profile of her that I did, so I will link that below. And in the meantime, happy reading and thanks.